what is going on, everybody? Welcome back in the TTP Sports. And you know, tonight was probably, if everything was normal in this universe, when nothing is really normal when it comes to Philadelphia sports. It just isn't. Tonight, if, like I said, if everything was normal, it would have been a typical Flyers recap. Flyers lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yada, yada, yada. They didn't play a good game. Pittsburgh basically dominated the entire, you know, I would say process of the entire game. But it's what really transpired, and it has nothing to do with the game in general. It's what's happening outside of the game in Flyers land. And, <laughs> like, the writing was on the wall for this. There was a lot of stuff that was going down behind the scenes. Stuff that really wasn't being brought up to the public. Stuff that I've heard from inside stuff about this entire situation that was going down, and it did happen to fully go down and fully get finished during the first period of this game. It was really early into this game. I get a text message from one of my buddies during the first period because I'm not on my phone on Twitter, so I'm not seeing the news updates or anything like that. The first word they send me is, unreal. And I'm like, what happened? We're talking about the game? We talking about something else? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, they traded Cutter. And I'm like, What? And then I have to do my research, and this is as the game's going on. And, like, once once I saw the text message, they traded Cutter. My mind was not even focused on the game. I wasn't even paying attention to anything that was happening on the ice. I was fully engulfed on Twitter. And the first thing that I saw pop up was from the Philadelphia Flyers Twitter account. Was that, breaking news, trade, Flyers acquired defenseman Jamie Drysdale and a second round pick in the 2025 NHL Draft in exchange for prospect Cutter Gauthier. So, if you've been living under, you know, a rock or anything like that, didn't pay attention to anything that happened tonight, you weren't able to pay attention to anything that happened tonight. So, obviously, from, from what I said, the Flyers, they got a defenseman in Jamie Drysdale. Young, top pairing, you know, potential type of defenseman, 21 years old. He has some injury issues over the past couple of seasons. I believe he just came back from a major injury, which he basically missed the entirety of last season. Last season, he only played in eight games. And previous to that, he played in his rookie season, which was the lot, the shortened season because of COVID, which was 21-20 when, you know, no fans in the stands. He played 24 games, then put up eight points for the Anaheim Ducks. And then in his next season, his first full season in the NHL, played in 80, 81 games, so only missed one. He scored four goals, recorded 28 assists for 32 points. So I'd say in your sophomore season, as a very young defenseman in this league, that's pretty good. And then last season, played in only eight games, didn't record a single point, got injured, missed the entire season, and he missed the first half of this year, I believe, because of that same injury, and I believe he just came back, if I'm looking at his game log right now, yeah, he basically just came back to the team, he's only played in 10 games so far, and he has recorded 5 points in those 10 games, so that is definitely something to look into right there, it does look like it's all even strength though, there's nothing on the power play or anything like that, he actually does have a shorthanded point, and he is also averaging 21 minutes a night, so he is playing top minute type of time here with the Anaheim Ducks, so what the Flyers are getting, to all the scouting reports, he's a guy that's an offensive defenseman, can be a, a top pairing guy in the future if developed properly. He can quarterback a power play. He is a very impressive skater, very great with the puck. Basically, all that stuff had a lot of, you know, great accolades about his scouting report. So it's going to take time probably with him. He's still only 21 years old. He's got his, you know, chunk of change here in the NHL with the Anaheim Ducks. I'm not sure, you know, the way that they developed him properly or anything like that. Even though in his sophomore season, he did put up 32 points. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's very impressive for, a, I believe at that point, he was 19 years old in the National Hockey League. So that is very impressive in itself. But, hey, very impressive stuff there. I believe he also played in some AHL games. I want to see if there's anything in the AHL, if I am not mistaken. So yeah, he did play in the AHL in 2021 before he got called up. He put up 10 points in 14 games, very good there. And that was basically his only stint in the AHL. He's been in the NHL ever since then. And hey, he's, you know, been a pretty solid defenseman. Nothing fully standout-ish from his game so far. And granted, he has been injured a lot in the past couple in the past season and a half. So he's just getting healthy again. 
He's coming into a fresh space. He's going to be under Bradshaw and John Tortorella, which is probably going to try to up his defensive game, try to see what they can bring out there. And who knows, maybe they try him on the power play, try him quarterbacking and see if he can get anything out of this power play. I'm definitely very interested and intrigued to see what Bradshaw can do with Jamie Drysdale on that fact, just because he has found ways to get the most out of the guys so far on this roster in the way Travis Sanheim has played this year. Cam York, Rasmus Ristolainen, and Nick Sealer, you know, Sean Walker, the list goes on with the defenseman that Bradshaw has been very, you know, improving their games. And let's see how he can implement Jamie Drysdale into that. But then, yes, it, it also does sting to see getting rid of Cutter Gauthier, one of the top prospects, excuse me, in this organization, Boston College just won a gold medal at the World Juniors for Team USA, led the entire, you know, tournament in, in scoring. I believe he was voted the top forward in that tournament. But once you start seeing all the things that, that's that been going on here, basically since the trade went down, Cutter Gauthier did not want to play in Philadelphia. It was very obvious from that fact. And Danny Breyer had a you know, a press conference during the first intermission talking about the entire thing. Even Jonesy, I believe, talked during the second intermission. Same thing with, you know, Dan Helferty, the chairman, you know, the face of the Flyers for Comcast Spectacor. And basically, when you can summarize from all three of them, Cutter Gauthier and his, you know, camp barely talked to the Flyers at all. Cutter Gauthier, I believe Danny Breer said it started from the world championships last summer. And if everyone even remembers that Cutter Gauthier did not participate in the Flyers rookie development camp this past summer. And, you know, he went right to college after that, you know, coming out of the world championships where he was playing overseas for team USA. And he did light it up there. Didn't come in the, in the development cap. And a lot of people took that as a big red flag. Personally, me, I was like, okay, he's probably playing too much hockey. He didn't want to come over here, but now when everything adds up, we all should have saw that that was a major red flag. And apparently from Danny Briere, this has been going on since that point. They even tried to trade him during last year's draft, what sounded like to the Montreal Canadiens for the fifth overall pick, and they would have taken David Reinbacker in that position, and they still would have kept the seventh overall pick, and they would have also drafted Mitchkoff in that situation. But Montreal didn't want to bite on taking Gauthier. And... It's amazing how much this was able to keep behind closed doors, basically keep keeping it away from the public. I've known about this for a little bit here. I tried to, you know, keep it on the hush-hush because I didn't want to really bring it up because I didn't want to, you know, out anybody or anything like that just in the case that it didn't come true. But, uh, yeah, it's been writing on the wall. And I'm not sure what this has to do with. Danny Breer has no idea what this has to do with. I'm sure he does, but he's not going to fully say what's the main reason why Gautier does not want to play in Philadelphia. My firm belief is, and it does kind of stem because some people did post a lot of stuff from the podcast that Gautier appeared on. I believe it was, you know, like after he was drafted or something like that when he first came to the first development camp for the Flyers after he was drafted. And I do think it does stem a lot from John Tortorella. And this is not me knocking John Tortorella at all. I think this is Cutter Gautier being an absolute just... A bitch. A bitch. That, that's just my honest opinion. Because during that entire podcast, it was also brought up that he's, you know, talking to some guys from the Flyers. The main guy that he talks to from the Philadelphia Flyers at that point when he was drafted was Kevin Hayes. You know, Kevin Hayes, Boston College guy. I'm sure Gautier was very familiar with him. So he got, you know, implemented with him to try to get, you know, familiar with the organization and everything like that, which is very understandable. Connection to the guy. Both guys went to the same college, both played for the same hockey team. Very understandable. So, does that mean, with all the stuff that happened last season, with all the turmoil with this team, and how, you know, Kevin Hayes was technically in John Tortorella's doghouse, and then eventually Kevin Hayes got traded to the, you know, St. Louis Blues and that entire thing. Was Kevin Hayes involved in this? Did Kevin Hayes try to, you know, put something in the Cutter Gauthier's mind? Because it was definitely very obvious that Kevin Hayes did not like John Tortorella, not one bit, especially with the, you know, the way that he was implemented last year in the lineup. It, it was very obvious to that fact. 
did Kevin Hayes say something to Cutter Gauthier, like saying, you don't want to play in Philadelphia, you don't want to play for John Tortorella, you don't want to play in that system, because John Tortorella, you're going to hate him. Is it something like that to where Cutter Gauthier just didn't want to play in Philadelphia? Because Danny Breer did say that there was one point where Cutter Gauthier said that I was built to be a flyer, and then just all of a sudden, like he just doesn't want to play for the Flyers anymore. So it's a crazy thing. And if you're looking at terms of the rebuild and everything like that, yeah, that does take a major shot at the rebuild because that's one of your topper prospects. And yes, Cutter Gautier does have a very high ceiling, but then you're also hearing stuff from Danny Breer, Keith Jones, Dan Hilferty, kind of taking shots at Cutter Gautier. You know, Danny Breer, when he was looking at the, you know, the World Juniors and everything like that, it kind of sounded like he wasn't that much impressed. Like even Jonesy and Breer went to the, to the World Juniors to try to talk to Cutter Gautier in his camp. And they wouldn't give him a lick of time. His camp did not give Danny Briere, Keith Jones, any ounce of time just to even talk to them and hear them out. I don't know if that's on the player. I don't know if that's on his agency or anything like that. That's a bad look for the player, man. I, I don't care what you say. Like, Danny Briere and Keith Jones, they physically went out there to try to watch you, to try to see if they can talk to you. And Danny Breer says they've known this for about five months at this point. They've been trying to work through everything, trying to give Cutter Gauthier time, see if he changes his mind about not wanting to play for the Flyers. Maybe he changes his mind and everything like that. Other people are also trying to state that maybe he got pissed off because they didn't sign him to his entry-level contract last season, and they chose to go, you know, have him go back to college to play at Boston College for a second year. I don't know. I don't know. This is a lot of crazy stuff here. It, it's very wild to even think about this entire stuff. It, it's crazy. But you can definitely tell there was some type of animosity with Jonesy and Danny Briere. Like, Danny Briere can hide his emotions, but you can definitely tell from the words that he was using. He was kind of a little bit pissed. And Jonesy, I think Jonesy just wasn't hiding it. He was pissed, but he was in that typical Jonesy tone, the way that he talks. And even Dan Hilferty, too. He was just like... We don't want someone that doesn't want to play here. It's just like, they're, they're being honest. They're, they're, they're saying it up front. If you don't want to play here, you're not going to play here. Like, we, we don't want that in our locker room. And it's funny, too. Even post-game, you got Torch talking about it. Him being all excited for Drysdale, talking about he has no idea from Gutter Gautier be from a wall. <laughs> I'm like, what are, what's going on here? Travis Sandheim talking shit about him, basically. He doesn't want to play here. He's not going to play here. I have no idea who he is. Uh, Carter Hart even, you know, talking about it, saying like, oh, I've heard Cutter Gauthier is a great player, but I've also heard Jamie Drysdale is a great player and a great human being. So <laughs> what's going on here? Does the entire team, did the entire team just basically go, fuck you, Cutter Gauthier? That's basically what it sounds like. And I'm also honestly all for it. I'm honestly all for it because you don't want to play here, uh, dude. Dude, that's soft. That's soft. I know people. And other people are going to bring up, oh, but, but the Eric Lindros back in the day, he didn't want to play in Quebec, and he forced his way to Philadelphia. No, he didn't force his way to Philadelphia. Philadelphia just happened to win the trade sweepstakes. It could have been New York Rangers. It honestly could have been the New York Rangers in that entire situation. The Flyers just ended up winning that trade. So, I don't know. It's crazy stuff here, man. Crazy stuff. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. I do want to play the stuff from Jonesy. I do, I do want to play the stuff from Jonesy. The stuff from Danny is too long. I'll probably also play the Dan Hill for these stuff. But I want to get to the Jonesy stuff here. So this was during the game. I believe this was during the second intermission during the uh, NBC Sports Philly broadcast. J.J., Jonesy, and Bush on the call here. So J.J. and Bush were asking Jonesy about this entire trade. So let's let's get to this. We are joined by Keith. I know this isn't the cover of the Hockey News, Jonesy, but glad you could join us here in the booth. To if talk. it was, you guys wouldn't be in the picture. <laughs> That's for sure. That is absolutely for sure. But a year ago, I wouldn't have thought you would have been either. But uh, congratulations on that. But more importantly, this trade, which uh, I'm sure catches a lot of the fans by surprise because we've been talking about Cutter and watching him and thinking he was going to be a flyer, especially with what he said at the draft. Talk about how this all evolved. Yeah, he didn't want to be a flyer. So we had to, you know, come up with a plan. And fortunately, we were able to execute on that plan. His value would never be higher than it was after 
the World Junior Championships. Um, it was only going to decrease if the word got out there. Uh, I have to give a lot of credit to the people that we were negotiating with that they kept this quiet. Uh, it could have become a much more difficult yeah. situation. So the other general managers, presidents around the league, were outstanding in keeping this a private matter. Pretty because, tough to do that these days. Yeah, and that, the leverage starts to change in that case. So uh, you don't want to be a flyer. You're not going to be a flyer. And uh, we were very pleased in the return that we got a player that we coveted and were searching for in Jamie Drysdale, a right-handed shooting defenseman that was a former sixth overall pick. Uh, he's got skill, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing him get into our lineup. It'll be an emotional time in Anaheim for him. He's an extremely popular player and a great person, so can't wait to meet him. You got Bob Murray, the former Anaheim Ducks GM, on your staff right now. How comforting was that for you guys, knowing that you had somebody who drafted this player in Jamie Drysdale uh, to make that trade? And how long were you focusing on that particular player? It's been months. And Bob did have a, a huge part in it, and watching him, and especially in his return from a lower body injury this year, um, his insight was really helpful. Knowing the kid inside out was yeah. really helpful. Uh, we have a great feel for Jamie Drysdale, the person, and we're well aware of what he can bring as a player, and he's only 21 years old on the blue line. It's really great what he's done so far in his career, but I think the best is yet to come. And I think you'll see a great improvement when he arrives here with a coach like Brad Shaw, Brad Shaw running the defense. He's done a great job in that regard, helping develop our other players. Now, Jonesy, I know you talked with you about building teams for many years, and I know this situation was forced by Cutter, but you also believe you've got to build that back end. So in a way, it leads to what you wanted to do with this team, correct? Yeah, it's a big part of it. Uh, there's no question that that was our number one focus on the teams that we discussed, uh, player for player type trades. That was something that we were focused on, and uh, we're really pleased with the return. But what's this say about the direction the Flyers are going? I mean, a lot of people expected this crew to be sellers at the trade deadline, yet you acquire a player not only for the future, but for today. What's it say about what this it, club has done so far to, to make a trade well, like it, this? The, the team has been outstanding and how hard they played for one another. Um, that didn't really play into this. This was a unique situation that uh, was kind of thrown at us, and we had to react appropriately. Um, but that was not based upon how the team has played this year. But uh, we're really looking forward to watching them continue to play as well as they have. And now we have another person to help us on the back end. I mean, looking from all of this, it's like Jonesy said, the writing was on the wall, basically. They've known about this for a while. Jones even stated that from his performance at the World Juniors, his value probably wasn't going to be higher as it was at that point. You got to take advantage of what you can. A lot of people are going to say, "Oh, you didn't get that much for Cutter Gauthier." Look, the trade has a chance to probably work out for both sides. If Jamie Drysdale, it's not that he hasn't been he has been bad. I thought, like you know, if you look at his stats, his sophomore season in the NHL, very good for a 19 year old defenseman at that time. Yes, he's dealt with an injury that kept him out basically the majority of last season and halfway through this season. Now he's back. Now he's healthy. Now he's in a different organization that has very focused on building from the blue line up. And they have a coach in Brad Shaw that has done wonders for a lot of the defensemen on this blue line as improved their games mightily. Like I said, Travis Sanheim, Cam York, Rasmus Ristolainen, Sealer, Walker, everybody. So Jamie Drysdale has a chance to be a part of that mold. And if he does live up to his potential, you got a number one pairing guy that could be a quarterback of a power play, something that this team desperately needs and something that this team has desperately look, been looking for. And Cutter Gauthier, I know there's a lot of talks about him, you know, transitioning the center and all that stuff. Even Danny Breyer said during his press conference that he doesn't view Gauthier as a center anymore. He thinks he'll probably more average out as a left winger. So the Flyers, yeah, you lost the forward that could have been a scorer for you in the future. You still got Matt Vamichkov in the system. They're building from the blue line up, and this team is definitely going to be focusing on getting forwards, getting centers. Yes, they still lack in the center depth department in terms of the prospects and high-end talent and all that stuff. Danny knows that. 
Danny knows that. What they're doing this season isn't going to, you know, stray away from their path. You know, they just got a, a defenseman that could be a future top pairing guy in the future. That, you know, only adds to their goal. We have to see how this entire thing plays out before we judge anything. Cutter Gauthier did not want to play in Philadelphia. That is the bottom line. You had to get something done. Because you're saying, oh, just wait and everything like that. Just, you know, make him sit and everything like that. Then you would run the risk of him just hitting free agency and you losing him basically for nothing. Yes, I know if a coll- if a guy that you drafted out of college just goes in the free agency, you get a compensatory draft pick out of it. <coughs> Excuse me there. But um, you had to trade him. You had to trade him. He, it was clear and obvious to the point he did not want to play in Philadelphia. And Danny Breer and Keith Jones, they probably did the best they could here. And they got themselves a 21-year-old, top-pairing possibility, potential offensive defenseman. Something that this team desperately needs. So we'll see how this pans out for both squads. We'll see. We'll definitely see from there. I do want to see if there's anything else here on Twitter before we end it off. But uh, let's see. I know there's a lot of stuff here from Charlie O'Connor in terms of the press conferences and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Cutter Gauthier from a hole in the wall. <laughs> that That is amazing. From John Tortorella there. Sanheim, you know, Sanheim said that Gauthier not attending development camp was noticed by the team members last summer. Players happy that someone who wants to be here is coming. Well, we'll see. Uh, Torts said Travis Sanheim might see some time on the left side of the ice with the addition of Jamie Drysdale. They are going to give Drysdale every opportunity they can. I like that. I like that. Uh, Torts said he spoke with Jamie Drysdale after the game. He said the kid's head is spinning, but he'll be there for practice tomorrow in Voorhees. Some exciting stuff there. I'm sure he'll be on the ice for a Wednesday's game against uh, Montreal. Interesting stuff here, boys. Interesting stuff. Uh, Charlie O'Connor also puts this here. I think it's abundantly clear the Flyers are frustrated with Gauthier. Briere was professional, but he didn't hold back with info from their perspective. Torts was torts. Even Sanheim basically said, if he didn't want to be here, we don't want him. And they have every right to be. Man. Yeah, I don't blame these guys for being pissed off. Like, dude, we drafted you, and you're coming up to us saying you don't want to play for us. What the point? What what, what the hell? What the hell? So, we got to see what happens here. We got to see what happens here. We do. We got to see what happens here, man. But imagine, you know, now all this stuff with Cutter Gauthier, how high does this put him on the hate list for the city of Philadelphia? I'm sure you got Ben Simmons is probably still number one. You know, Crosby is up there. You know, anything in football is still up there. Jonathan Gannon's up there. Uh, Who else? I'm trying to think of the most hated faces in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, I'm sure Carson Wentz is up there. Uh, Scott Rowland's definitely up there. Uh, I'm sure Cutter Gauthier with this, you know, performance definitely is up there. Definitely is up there. But man, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. This is some crazy stuff. And I'm sure more shit's just going to come out as the days goes along until we find out the full story about this. But I firmly believe... And yes, this is not full, clear, and concrete. And it's funny, too. Kevin Hayes is now going after San Filippo. After San Filippo talked about how this has Kevin Hayes' fingerprints written all over it. So, uh, interesting stuff here. Interesting stuff. We'll have to see how the days go along to follow this. (laughs) So, what are your guys' thoughts on this entire situation? I know this was a long one, but, you know, it's a crazy situation that we got ourselves into overall. So, Leave your comments in the comment section down below on thoughts on this entire situation. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. does me a great deal of service. Also use the code TTP Sports. $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Great deal. Do not pass it up. Thanks, guys, for tuning into this crazy stuff with the Flyers. But we'll see if there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks, guys, for joining tonight or whenever you're viewing this. I'll see you next time.